rising. Remember your faith. But remember that the reality is in your mind. And collectively it is in our minds. I tell my students, this is the major problem right here. Everything we see around us has originated from inside of somebody's mind. Everything. But the major problem is this. We have something that is free and clear. But we lease it to someone else. In exchange for 10% of what it's worth. Did you get what I just said? Everybody in this room has one piece of real estate that is free and clear every day of the week. But we're conditioned, as we heard on yesterday, to allow this and this to be leased to someone else, to be utilized by someone else, not in cooperation with someone else, but by someone else, in exchange for 10% or less of what it's really worth. Ezekiel is learning how to reclaim his mind. He thinks he's a slave. He thinks he's in exile. But he has to learn, Ezekiel, in your mind. In your mind, my son, is the treasure you're looking for. In your mind, my son, is the hope that you're anticipating. And in your mind, my son, is the whole reality that is waiting to be birthed through you. Now, let's just meditate on that. No matter what it is you're dealing with today, I don't care how difficult it is or seems to be. The solution to that problem is in your mind. You just need to dig a little bit deeper. Not in fear, but go into the depths. And then once you go into the depths, start looking up. Look up above the crassness of what you're involved in. Look up above those indistinct forms that don't make sense to you when they come to you in your dreams, but follow your intuition anyhow. Look up into the realm of creative possibilities and don't doubt it. Look up and listen to the voice of the daughter that speaks from the back of your head. Look up and listen to the small, still voice. And when you look up, you know what you'll see. I got to tell you the secret. Ezekiel didn't see God sitting on the throne. That's a misinterpretation. What Ezekiel sees actually is his best self sitting on the throne. He just didn't know it at that time. Mm. And while he was still Ezekiel, he thought that was something else. No, 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 no. In the mysteries of Kabbalah, we say when you ride the chariot, when you ascend the worlds, the ultimate goal is not for you to see who's sitting on the throne, but it's for you to get on the throne. The living one is not up there and out there. The living one is right here waiting to be ascended in the world of consciousness. And when he looks up and sees his better self, oh, then his old self has to die. When you see your better self, your old self got to die. When you see your better self, the old name dissolves. And you are born again. And you become the son or daughter of life. Old things have passed away. Behold, look, old things have become new. And then like a baby for 38 chapters, 
He learns how to walk again, how to talk again, how to strut again, how to see again, how to imagine again. Hmm. New birth is just the first stage. When he saw his better self, he died because it was so overwhelming, he couldn't believe he could be so great. Can you believe it? You're just that great. And if that greatness causes you to die, die! 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 And once you fall down, hmm, there's a voice. Once self and ego fall down dead, it's always this way in biblical mysticism. All the seers had to go through this. Stuck in ego. Stuck in position. Stuck in fear. Stuck in pride. You got to die. Ah, but once you die, then something on the inside that our ancestors talked about, the voice. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know I have been what I have been. I am that I am. And I will be what I will be. And I'm inside of you. Once you fall down dead, then the voice comes and it just speaks and says, my child, my little one, my baby, now you're born again. Now, look at your hands and see if they don't look new. And if that's not enough, look down at your feet and see if they don't too. Come, try to walk a little bit and see if you don't step differently now. Come, my little one. Come. Yeah. Mm. Wake up. I got something for you you haven't seen before. I'm going to take you now through 38 chapters. I'm going to take you now through 40 chapters. I'm going to take you through as many chapters as we need to go to for you to get the point. You're not the same. I made you. I shaped you in my image. Now let me show you what you really are versus what you've been thinking about. Stop thinking about that and begin to think about this. Now we come to the mystery. When that being took that cord and brought Ezekiel, drip, drip, drip. So he said, come on, follow me. You see, now it's just ankle deep. Come on, follow me. Now you see, it's right up there to your knees. Come on, follow. You hear what I said? When you get scared, just come on, follow me. Come on, follow me. Now it's up to your ways. Now, come on, follow me. Ezekiel said, I can't. It never occurred to Ezekiel. Listen to what I'm about to say. In his dream, in his mind, that perhaps in the dream world of his mind and his imagination, some things that were not possible in the physical world could be possible in this one. It never occurred to Ezekiel. That if he walked on in the water, he might get some type of amphibian way of breathing in the water. It never occurred to him that the water would become oxygenated. Because the being is still out there in the water. Not snorkeling, but deep walking. You see. You see. It's one thing to want to walk on top of the water. But it's something else to decide to walk through the wall. Not before again. Mm. Yeah. If you want to go on this path, he said to Ezekiel, you can't walk on top of this. But if you follow me, you'll walk through it to the other side. <laughs> 